It's here at last. The monumental history-making motion picture. 14 years in the making. The $12 million epic, The Alamo. Starring John Wayne as Colonel David Crockett. He's still on his feet. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, and it's my turn. The Alamo. Filling the giant theater screen with spectacular adventure. Filmed on a scale unequaled in motion picture history. Recreating the 13 glorious days of the siege history we'll never forget. And you will always remember the Alamo. Film restoration is important. Film is a part of our culture. And despite the title, be it a great film from the 30s like Capra's Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, or a spaghetti western like The Day of Anger, these films need to be preserved. They are documents of their time. In recent years, major studios have gone back to their vaults and have restored major films where needed, or made sure the conditions are good for a decent transfer to high-definition Blu-ray. If they need a restoration, they now have in-house teams that will work on those films. That wasn't always the case. When Blu-ray came about, Sony Home Pictures was the champion, with the head, Grover Crisp, really taking charge and supervising almost every transfer. Warner Home Video was also doing great work. And now you got Sean Belson at Fox, which brings me to the Alamo and MGM UA. The Alamo was John Wayne's directorial debut about the Battle of the Alamo, with Wayne playing Davy Crockett. The film was epic, and it had a roadshow engagement and was shot in the 70mm Todd AO format. The battle scenes are really exciting. The film is flawed, and Davy Crockett is less a historical figure and more of a mouthpiece for John Wayne. But then again, what historical character isn't for a filmmaker? The 70mm roadshow print was discovered and it was put into storage and it had been deteriorating. Film restorer Robert Harris, who restored David Lean's Lawrence of Arabia, Stanley Kubrick's Spartacus, George Cukor's My Fair Lady, Hitchcock's Vertigo and Rear Window, and Coppola's The Godfather and Godfather Part Two. He was asked by MGM to restore the original 202-minute roadshow version of the film. During the initial proceedings, and from my understanding, MGM UA had financial problems and it threw the whole project up in the air. The head of MGM UA is a gentleman by the name of Gary Barber, and when outside forces started donating money to the project, they rejected it. And it also turned out to be bad PR for the studio, showing that they didn't care about the film. And Barber has shown that he's not really interested in the restoration, and when Robert Harris stated that the film is going fast and MGM UA doesn't care, they decided to try and put his name through the mud, and say Harris is upset because they chose somebody else to do the restoration, and that Gary Barber is now personally involved. It's his personal project. And they also said that the film is in pristine condition. The 70 millimeter print is in pristine condition. Of course it is not. And that was in 2014. The position seems to be let it rot, because nothing has been done. Also, MGM UA is hardly the studio it once was, which is another story, but don't forget, Turner owns the classic MGM catalog, and when he moved his operations to Time Warner, Warner Brothers got the classic MGM catalog, and they've been keeping that stuff in awesome shape. Now, the arguments that I have heard, the film sucks, it's not a masterpiece, it was Wayne's vanity, vanity project, blah, blah, blah. All very well and true. But the film has fans, and despite what people may say, John Wayne is an American icon. We may not all agree on the things he did and said outside of the screen, but he is an icon. 
and even the lesser-known John Wayne films have been restored and preserved. McClintock is one of that I, I can think of. Well, to me, that was a lesser-known Wayne title. But really, this leads to a bigger discussion. What other film does MGM UA have in their vaults? What other films are they willing to let rot? Some of the prints that they have presented to the specialty companies, like Kino Lorber Classics, Shout Factory, Olive, etc., they've been hit or miss. One of their so-called prestigious films, West Side Story, came out a few years ago in a less than stellar but overly expensive anniversary box set. The optical effects sections were faded, and the overture sequence had wrong color filters. The colors were incorrect. And West Side Story does deserve a full-on restoration, and it needs it as well. And this leads to another question, too. Just because a film is not considered a classic, should it be allowed to rot forever? You will find that while there are lots of fans of The Godfather, there are fans of killer clowns from outer space. Or, as far as my wife is concerned, 21 Dresses. Film needs to be considered important. In recent years, most films seem like theme park rides. But despite the film, it is an art form. And for a studio to disregard one of their titles and not care about it, it means there are other films in the vault that may be prestigious that they don't care about. That is wrong. Wrong all the way. That should make film fanatics angry. Certainly makes me angry.